All right, welcome back, everybody. I was wrong on Oprah Winfrey. She's 70 million dollars richer today thanks to that Weight Watchers investment. Bernie Sanders might want to tax that money, but it's not just the rich he's going after. Uh, give him kudos for being consistent to Peter Ducey in Washington on a plan to make sure everyone pays their taxes. And Peter, I guess he means everyone, huh? He does. And Neil, it's really interesting. Remember, Talking Heads declared Hillary Clinton the winner of last week's Vegas debate, but Sanders is the one whose numbers are spiking in the time since. Secretary Clinton is still ahead, but flat. She's got 45%. Then there's the Democratic Socialist Senator Sanders up five points in a CNN post-debate poll that makes him the only one trending upwards even as he introduces a big tax hike. When a mom gives birth, she doesn't have to go back to work in two weeks. So if there's an illness to the family, dad or mom can stay home with the kids. That will require a small increase in the payroll tax. I'm on board uh, Senator Gillibrand's legislation and we can accomplish that with a, just a small increase in the payroll. But that'll hit everybody. Idea. That's going to hit everybody. That would hit every. Yeah, it would. And the Vice President Joe Biden speaking right now has 18 percent support in that new poll, even though he hasn't debated and he still hasn't publicly said he wants to be president. But sources are telling Fox that some activists want the VP in the race before Clinton's Benghazi testimony Thursday because if she does well, it could really help her sell more undecided voters on the idea of her as commander in chief before he even gets started. Neil. All right, Peter, thank you very much. Peter Ducey. Now uh, to a read on whether taxing everybody is fair, Julie Roginski and uh, Charles Payne. I think I kind of know ahead of time their respective positions, but Julie, slightly on the left of Charles on this uh, point of view, you, you say what to what Bernie Sanders wants to do. Uh, I'm all for it. I was all for it when Kirsten Gil uh, Gillibrand, who's the senator from New York, proposed this look. The average woman would be paying $1.38 more a month for this, which is nothing. Um, the top, top, top tier would be paying fewer than $5 a month for this. And what this does is allow, we talk about family values all the time. This is the most family values thing you can do. If you give birth, you don't have to go right back to work. You could stay home and take care of your baby. You could breastfeed your child without having to worry about giving him or her formula because you have to rush back to work. If you have a well, sick how, family member, you have to What is rushing them. back to work for you? What is rushing back to work for me? I think 12 weeks, which is what this proposal does, is the tip of the iceberg. You know, I had to go back to work right away. A lot of other women did. Most women cannot afford to stay home with unpaid family leave. This, to me, is the most family values, family friendly thing you can do. And people who right. talk about family values should espouse this position. All right. We, well, there are a lot of things to espouse, but, but this stuff costs money. Uh, Charles Payne, what do you think? Yeah, the, I think the bigger family value thing is having a job in the first place. It goes along with our, all the other stuff. Higher minimum wage, uh, you know, the forced part-time work stuff from Obamacare. All of these things, as far as the government encroaching on private business and telling them what they must do, all they're going to ultimately do is create fewer jobs. And I think we've seen an example of that in the last seven years. Now, Bernie Sanders himself, this is just part of a litany, a laundry list that adds up to $18 trillion. So, of course, the average person is going to be taxed. Everyone's going to be taxed. And this giant welfare giveaway utopia is just going to fall apart. It's just going to be another example of Greece or Venezuela all over again. If you really want to help American families, just create an economy that's growing, where everyone can find jobs. And if you have the skill set, you'll probably get more days off. But let's get jobs first. You know, Julie, one of the things that Bernie Sanders has said is that this is what uh, other European countries do. But those European countries are in a world of hurt. Greece is in and out of insolvency and bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, Italy, and I'm afraid to say my people not much further behind. The point is that, yeah, you could talk about gradle to grade protections and securities, but then comes the little issue about paying for it. Well, Neil, you want to talk about paying for it? Let's talk about America. The median worker would pay an extra dollar thirty-eight a month. A dollar thirty-eight. I think we could all swing that. I spend more at Starbucks every two hours. So you 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 all, you you think that that's where it stops? Whatever increase, uh, that's, that's where it the, stops. That's I, the bill, no, that's I have not the bill. known a tax increase that has ever stopped at that level. That is the bill that he's a spe for he. That is the bill that he's talking about, and that is the bill that he's supporting. A buck thirty-eight for the median worker to me. Seems like a very good trade-off. Julie, Julie, listen fact, to what yeah. you're saying. I mean, when we started Medicare, the financing had a set limit for which it would go. Then that was raised and raised and raised. Social Security, the same. Raised okay. and raised and raised. So I'm just saying what starts out as something that looks like an affordable tax becomes a unlikely burden. 
Well, wait a second. You're talking about now saying that Medicare and Social Security are a bad idea. I don't understand where you want to go back to. What do you days remember you want to how go back they to were sold? The do you remember how they were sold? Do you remember Medicare sold as a $66 million program that is now a half trillion dollar program? Well, Neil, good I, intentions run I, deep and get very expensive. How old do you think I am that you think I remember where Medicare? How old do you think I well, am? Well, this my is why friend? I asked you the question no. because you obviously don't remember. That. I don't but remember. But you're on My only issue, and I take no, no umbrage against anyone like Julie anyone who has a very good heart I just think the rest of this country pays for that we're paying and then for realize, it now and then realizes that they're getting very little bang for the we're, buck as a Neil, result we're, we're paying for it now with well, lost, minute, we're pay, we're paying for lost it now. productivity and all lost, but of course. Charles look at Italy it's, look at Greece look at Portugal yeah. look at Spain and to your point, Neil, I mean, the great war on poverty, 50 years old, was going to cost a handful of billions. We've spent trillions on it. I, listen, Bernie Sanders' laundry list is $15 trillion for Medicare, another trillion for Social Security, a trillion for infrastructure, almost a trillion for free college, $300 billion for fee, free family aid, uh, $29 billion for private pensions. I mean, the list goes on and on. We know that these numbers are just the beginning. And, and it's not fair. It's not even partially honest to say, oh, Oh, man, I wasn't around when all those other things were being promoted. We're all somewhat historians. We know what we're talking about. We know economically we've got to be very careful. I think we shouldn't try to divvy up the spoils of this nation. We should try to figure a way to reignite it so that the ship, the same tide lifts all ships. Right now, all I hear from the Bernie Sanders of the world is that America has peaked. Let's break, let's divvy up the money and see where we go from no, here. No, no, Wait a second. You're talking about the fact that you're talking about lost productivity. You're talking about lost wages. And in fact, what you're talking about is many women out there find it cheaper to stay home and take care of their kids than they do to go in the workforce. A lot of people find it cheaper since the government's paying them to you stay home. You want to discourage work? This is the best way to discourage work. A lot of full-body, able, 25-year-old men are getting a Social Security disability because they can. I'm talking about we, the we're talking about a country that's created uh, Charles, an environment where you don't have to work. Charles, I don't know what university you're living in. I don't know what you know about infant care, but it costs more than some states Julie, to put Julie, an infant. Julie, no, no, let me Julie, finish saying this. You don't have Julie, to tell. Julie, Julie, you're insulting me now because I have a couple of kids. I have a couple of grandkids. I mean, you're insulting me. Do you, know how, much, do you know, know how much it costs to put them Will through a Will you get a job without a job? It's a mute a point. Job, without a job, grand, it's a mute point. It costs 35 grand to put right, you know, to I can turn care. this studio around right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, Julie, the only thing I will raise is yes. do you find it odd that in the Democratic debate, obviously a lot of big spending plans, big spending initiatives, not a one, not a one to how to pay for it, not a one to address the debt. In fact, the debt didn't even come up. Well, As a liberal, does that bother you that apparently the party seems to be uh, immune to math? Well, actually, it's not immune to math. I want to talk about who actually had um, a balanced budget the last time. I believe I was a Democratic president. Answer my the last question. Time did it come budget. up during that debate? It did not come up no, during that it debate. Did not. But do you want to talk about this specific proposal? This specific proposal has, it is paid for, it does not add a cent to the debt and does not add right, a cent to the deficit. Right. And what it does is allows women to get back in the workforce. You want to encourage work? This is the best way to do it. All right. I wish we had more time. Blessedly, we do not. But, guys, I want to thank you both <laughs> very, very much. Thanks. Right. Meanwhile, a Republican congressman who fears we've got an arm race going on in the middle.